We saw previously a lot of aldehyde and ketone reactions, uh, but since aldehydes and ketones are pretty important on the MCAT in terms of the OCHEM section, uh, we'll look into more of those right now. Right? Um, so this one is just reacting an alcohol with a ketone, um, and this doesn't have to be a ketone, it can also be um, an aldehyde. Right? So we'll see what happens right here. So the first thing that we're going to produce is something called a hemiacetal. Right? Um, and this is called a hemiacetal. So what pretty much it is, is a hemiacetal has to have um, one carbon and it has to have an OH and an OR group um, attached to it. These two don't matter, the R's right here don't matter, but it has to have this OH, this C, and this OR prime. Um, it has to have it in that specific order right, for it to be considered a hemiacetal. And we'll see that later on when we do with sugars, uh, we'll, that's when hemiacetal and acetal are important to know. All right? um, and so if we react this again uh, with another alcohol, what's going to happen is we're going to get something called an acetal. All right, so what we replaced was this OH is now replaced for this OR prime, double prime. All right, and this is called an acetal. All right, so it's important to distinguish between a hemiacetal and an acetal. Um, in the acetal, we have an OR, C, and another OR. In the hemiacetal, we have an OR, C, and OH. So we can think of hemiacetal as like semi-acetal, which is halfway. We can think of it halfway of an acetal, which is the OH in place of that OR. Right? Um, so I think you guys can imagine how this mechanism would work. Um, you know, in this, this alcohol would just come in and attack, and that's how we would get that. But how do we get from a hemiacetal to an acetal? And that's why I'll show you the mechanism right here. Right. So what pretty much happens, this is a simplified mechanism so it may not show everything. A lot of times when I draw these mechanisms, um, it's just more to, to make it a little bit more simplified so we kind of can visualize how it may be done, but that's not actually how the electrons may move. Right. So what happens is, um, you know, the, the OH is just going to grab an H+, because remember OH is not a good leaving group, but water, uh, charged water, is a good leaving group. Right. And then what's going to happen is... We're gonna get, all right, so we're gonna get something like this, um, and we're gonna have um, you know the double bond moving down like that, um, and now we see that there's gonna be um, a charge on here so that we we can attack it similar to the Grignard reagent. Um, so when we do that, we're gonna get something like this. It's gonna move up, um, and eventually we'll get our final product of the acetal. All right. So, you know, just know that it's, it's fairly similar to a Grignard reagent. Um, I think all uh, ketone, and a, um, ketone and aldehyde reactions should look similar to a, a Grignard reagent, um, but they're just a, a little bit variations of them. So just make sure you know how to distinguish between the hemiacetal and the acetal, and that'll be very important. Next up, we're going to be looking at reacting amines um, with ketones. Um, and so what we're going to create is something called an imine. Okay, so that's an important name to know. You kind of have to distinguish between an amine, an uh, imine, um, and an amide. Okay, so know how to draw all of those and just know this basic reaction. Um, this one should just be the same thing, uh, but all we're doing is this R group is now an OH. So we'll see what will happen here. All that's going to happen is that OH will replace that R group. Okay, So R group is just anything generally. We're talking about methyls, ethyls, stuff like that, just carb carbon change. Uh, but in this case, this OH can also act as that R group. All right. So I generally don't have you guys worry about um, too much of the names of the reactions, but this is one that you will need to know the name, um, and it's an aldo condensation. So they may actually just give you a, a mechanism and say, is this an aldo condensation, and they'll give you a bunch of other ones. So this is one that you'll have to know the name of, um, and it's a pretty common one on the MCAT. So what happens here, um, we'll see the mechanism later, but pretty much in short, what will happen is we're going to create something like that. Um, and we're just combining two ketone molecules, two of the exact same ketone molecules together, um, and this is known as acetone. They react together and they form this molecule right here, um, and then when we add heat, we're going to get this molecule right here, um, and it's an alpha-beta unsaturated compound, okay? alpha-beta being this is the alpha carbon, this is the beta carbon, um, and it's unsaturated because it has a double bond. Okay? Um, so one thing to note is that if you don't have this heat, 
we're not going to get all the way to that alpha beta unsaturated. We're going to stop right here. Right? So that a lot of times they will not put heat and they'll put both of these in the answer choices. So you have to kind of know that that's the case. So now we'll look at actually how we got that. Looking at the mechanisms now, uh, we start off with this acetone molecule right here. Um, and we're reacting it with the base. So what's going to happen is we're going to make this into a negative charge. All right? um, and so when we're reacting it with another ketone, we can think of this like a Greek nerd again. Um, and just to let you know, this is a simplified mechanism. So there's a couple extra steps that I have left out. Um, but just to make it simpler for us. So what's going to pretty much happen is um, it's going to react like a Greek nerd. All right? And we're going to get this product right here. And so this should look very similar to uh, uh, the product we got um, as an intermediate without adding heat, um, except for the, the extra hydrogen, okay? So it may look kind of funny, it may look uh, how do we get that, but if you just follow the arrows that you drew, follow all the carbons, make sure all the carbons are there, you'll definitely be able to get the product, okay? So now when we add heat, what's going to happen is we're going to lose water, okay? And we're going to lose the water from this OH right here and one of these hydrogens, okay? And we'll see that the final product will look like that. Okay, all we did was remove that OH and this H and, and dehydration reaction. Okay, a simple way to do it is just like this. Okay, what I usually do is I draw the two compounds um, that are reacting with one another. And these don't have to be the same. They can be different. Uh, one could be aldehyde, one could be a ketone. One could have more carbon chains on, on one side and less on the other. Um, but what I usually do is I just draw it like this. I angle it in this way and I just connect them. Okay? I connect them and I say that there's two hydrogens that are lost over here. Okay? So there's two hydrogens that are lost right here. So one hydrogen, one hydrogen are lost here. And this oxygen is lost. Okay? And our final product will just look like that. Okay? All we did was um, remove those H2O molecule and then we connected them like that. All right, so you don't really have to go through this entire mechanism. Whichever one works for you, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but what I usually do, I don't even worry about how the mechanism works anymore. I just kind of connect the dots like that. And so now we saw that that was the final product, the alpha beta unsaturated compound. So what if we react this with the nucleophile? What's going to happen? And our nucleophile that we're going to work with is CN minus. All right? Our product is going to look like this. Okay, so it just adds on the beta carbon. Okay? Um, so we're going to see how that actually works. Again, this is a very simplified mechanism. So this CN- minus is going to come react like this. Push everything up. Make it like this. Um, all right, so all we did is move the double bond over and pop that uh, double bond up. And it's just going to react down again. All right? And our final product is going to be like we saw above. Right. Uh, it's going to get the hydrogen um, from any type of water molecule or, or floating um, hydrogen ion. Um, and so that's going to be our product right there. Okay. So as long as we can just uh, try to make, as easy, make our lives as easy as possible by seeing these mechanisms and trying to find tricks on, on how they work, um, you know, make, definitely make our life a lot better. If you like our videos, be sure to check out our website mcapforme.com. The videos accompany our free MCAT course syllabus for a three-month study plan. We have the books you should use, the homeworks to do, videos to watch, and chapters to read. Also, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We'll have new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Thank you.